please stand for the reading of the gospel for this morning. The sermon text comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 16. Luke 16, beginning in verse 19. If you want to follow along in the Pew Bible, you'll find that beginning on page 79 in the Newer Testament. Luke 16, 19. And Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner received evil things. But now he's comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham. But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus Messiah. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, O Lord, and give us the ears of faith to hear. Speak, gracious God, and challenge us to live your word. Come and invest us with your spirit, that we may be the vessels that carry a priceless, priceless treasure. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. That's how the old counting rhyme goes. Uh, in days gone by, heavens, in centuries gone by, people used that uh, as a way to play games. In England, and I'm not endorsing uh, sexism in any way, but in England, in the 17th and 18th centuries, they'd use this line of rhyme, little girls would use this rhyme as a sort of a divination game, you see. They'd, uh, they'd play this game and to find out what their future husband's professions would be. You didn't really want to get poor man, beggar man, or thief. But they would use this to try to figure out what their futures would be like in a day when little girls in England were not going to have professions of their own. It's a rhyme, it's a counting game, it's a divination game, it's all sorts of things. 
But I like that phrase, rich man, poor man. It just sort of trips off the tongue, doesn't it? Which is probably why it got used as the name of a novel back in the late 60s and early 70s and became a miniseries on television. It was a huge smash. And if you were thinking of those things, well, you're on your own because I wasn't. And I have no idea what they're about. <laughs> what I know is that as I've used this phrase, rich person, poor person, I've tried to get at what I think is, is at the heart of this parable that Jesus tells. Because it isn't really a parable about riches per se. You see, it's a parable about justice. It's a parable about justification, self-justification. At one level, it is, it is very much a story about contrasts. I mean, from the very beginning, the first thing Jesus says is, and he's speaking, remember, to the Pharisees. Remember that? He's speaking to the Pharisees, whom he calls, whom the, the evangelist calls lovers of money. Whom Jesus says are people who prize all that is an abomination in the sight of God. He's speaking to these Pharisees who've made fun of him for saying that, that riches are, are an evil thing. They're making fun of him for, for being so naive as not to understand what the world is really like. They've made fun of him. And so he tells them this story. And it starts out with a rich man. Now, of course, the Pharisees are going to identify with the rich man because heaven knows they want to be rich. And they want to be rich not because the riches are something in themselves, but because the riches for the Pharisees are a sign of God's blessing. If one is rich, that means God loves one. And this rich man, because he is rich, oh heavens, God must love him. I mean, here he sits in the finest purple and expensive cloth because purple dye was very hard to come by. It's a sign of royalty even. Purple cloth, fine linens. And he has feasts every day. Oh, God loves him. He's done so much right in his life. God must love him. And on the other hand, Lazarus. Now, if, if, if riches are a sign of God's blessing, then what the Pharisees are going to ask themselves is, Hmm, I wonder what Lazarus did to earn such poverty. What did he do that he would earn this kind of pain and loss and suffering in his life? He has to be responsible. Somebody has to be responsible. He had to have done something. God is not fickle. God is not capricious. God doesn't just punish someone for no good reason. He did something to earn God's anger, God's wrath, the, 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 the absence of God's blessing. 